Why do the Taliban and ISIS hate each other? Divided by belief, fueled by ambition, why the Taliban and ISIS clash? Imagine two powerful groups, both claiming to represent Islam, yet locked in a bitter conflict. These aren't imaginary villains, they're the Taliban and ISIS. While sharing a religious foundation, their interpretations and goals clash violently. They have been engaged in a bitter feud since 2015. The big question is, why? What are the differences in their goals and beliefs that fuel this ongoing hatred? Today, we explore the complexities behind their conflict, exploring their ideological differences, power struggles, and the ongoing battle for dominance. It's essential to recognize that they don't represent all Muslims. These groups are extremists who have taken their religious tenets to the extreme far removed from the interpretations of ordinary practicing Muslims. The Taliban's rise. Our journey began in the early 90s during the Afghan civil war when the Taliban rose to prominence. Originating in Pashtun areas, they emerged amid the conflict caused by the Soviet Union's alliance with the Afghan government. The United States in the Cold War secretly supported the Mujahideen, devout Muslims opposing the Afghan government aligned with the Soviets. The Mujahideen's revolution, aided by U.S. support, gradually evolved into a strong force, leading to the Soviet Union's invasion in 1979. Despite the Soviets' military presence, the Mujahideen's familiarity with Afghan geography allowed them to persist. The conflict displaced millions, and from this disruption, the Taliban, under Mullah Muhammad Omar, emerged. Mullah Omar's vision, as the Soviets withdrew, a provisional government formed, but internal conflicts persisted. Mullah Omar, a Mujahideen commander turned Taliban leader, claimed to have had a vision urging him to restore peace. The Taliban, often labeled as freedom fighters by some, seized control in the mid-90s, ruling with an iron will and suppressing opposition. However, their reign ended in 2001 when a U.S.-led force invaded Afghanistan after the nine elements attacks. The Taliban were overthrown, leading to two decades of conflict. In 2022, a diplomatic agreement allowed U.S. forces to withdraw and the Taliban reclaimed power. The Taliban's beliefs and practices. The Taliban, a fundamentalist Islamic extremist movement, follows a literal interpretation of the Quran. Rooted in Sunni Islam and Pashtun traditions, they enforce harsh restrictions particularly on women's rights, education, and the media. Unlike the global ambitions of groups like Al-Qaeda, the Taliban's objectives were localized to maintain religious control within Afghanistan, promising stability under a strict interpretation of Sharia law. Now, let's shift our focus to ISIS, or the Islamic State, which was first formed by Jordanian jihadist Abu Musab al-Zarqawi in 1999 before rising to global prominence when it drove Iraqi forces out of key cities in the west of the country in 2014, having declared itself a worldwide caliphate, and later conquered swaths of eastern Syria before ultimately surrendering Mosul and Raqqa in 2017 when international forces intervened. It established the ISKP in the Nangarhar province of eastern Afghanistan in January 2015, actively recruiting defectors from the Taliban in particular those who were discontented with their own leadership's lack of success on the battlefield. ISISK and ongoing conflict. Enter ISISK, a self-proclaimed splinter group affiliated with ISIS that is actively aggressive towards the Taliban. With an even more extreme interpretation of Islam, ISISK conducted high-profile attacks against the Taliban. Despite reports of decreasing numbers, their ranks increased especially during the Taliban's recent advance across Afghanistan. Tactical Contrast The Taliban employ guerrilla warfare, rooted in their historical ties to the Mujahideen. This makes them challenging to defeat using traditional combat techniques. On the contrary, ISIS embraces more conventional, organized military tactics. They also adeptly utilize social media for recruitment, a strategy banned under Taliban control. Ideological divide. The heart of the ongoing conflict lies in their differing beliefs on the practice and enforcement of Islamic law. While both groups consist of extremist Sunni Muslims, 
the Taliban follows the Diobandi branch, whereas ISIS adheres to the more extreme Wahhabi Salafist tradition shared with Al-Qaeda. How have their respective factions interacted? The formation of ISKP prompted Taliban leader Mullah Akhtar Mohammed Mansour to write a letter to his ISIS counterpart, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, calling on him to abandon his recruitment drive for the disaffected and arguing that any war for their comparable cause in Afghanistan should be carried out under Taliban leadership. Fighting duly broke out between the two sides in June 2015 and between two separate factions of the Taliban in Zabul province that November over whether or not to join forces with ISIS. More battles erupted in April 2017 when ISKP captured three drug dealers selling opium to raise funds for the Taliban in the northern Afghan province of Jozjan, and again in May 2017 when 22 militants were killed in clashes between the two sides along the Iranian border. The Taliban launched an offensive to clear ISIS out of Jozjan the following summer, with the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan joining in on the latter's side as up to 7,000 people were displaced from their homes. That July's conflict ended in a significant defeat for ISKP, who suffered further setbacks and skirmishes the following year before being almost entirely eradicated by the U.S. and the Afghan military in late 2019, although the Council for Foreign Relations estimates that there are still 2,200 members of ISKP still active in Afghanistan. In February 2020, the Donald Trump administration signed its dubious peace accord with the Taliban in Doha, Qatar, which saw the latter group pledge to keep other Islamist extremists, including ISIS, out of the country. Beyond ideology, power struggles and territorial disputes play a crucial role. Both groups compete for dominance, resources, and control, leading to violent clashes for land and influence. This struggle intensifies in contested regions like Afghanistan, where both groups seek recruits and strongholds. This conflict fuels a cycle of violence that is difficult to break. ISIS-K persists, raising concerns about the potential for increased terrorism following the Taliban's takeover. Peace negotiations are often unsuccessful, and peace-building initiatives often fail to address the core issues. As a result, the conflict continues to rage on. The Taliban's recent control of Afghanistan creates a complex situation, while they initially focused on internal struggles, recent encounters with ISIS suggest a renewed focus on suppressing them. Additionally, international involvement plays a significant role. The withdrawal of U.S. troops in 2021 may create a power vacuum, potentially benefiting ISIS or leading to renewed conflict. As Afghanistan struggles with the aftermath of the Taliban's recapture of Kabul, questions linger about the country's future. The future remains uncertain. The alleged ISIS presence, coupled with the historical hatred between these groups, suggests a difficult path ahead. The complicated web of ideologies, power struggles, and conflicting ambitions keeps the world watching closely. Understanding the nature of the conflict between the Taliban and ISIS is crucial. Their ideological differences, power struggles, and complex histories contribute to this ongoing battle. Recognizing these complexities is the first step toward finding solutions that address the root causes of this conflict. This will pave the way for a more peaceful future. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, then share your thoughts in the comments and also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.